Welcome viewers to your most trusted news channel. Today we are going to be unmasking the truth behind foreign aid. An instrument that has been used for decades by developed countries to entangle developing countries within the strings of colonization. In 2010 the island nation of Haiti was hit by a devastating earthquake that killed over 200,000 people. This disaster moved nations and billionaires around the world who stepped in to assist through donations. The U.S. alone donated over $1.3 billion but it turns out less than 10% of that amount reached Haiti. The rest of the money was injected into U.S. private firms and to this day, it remains unclear how they spent the money or if it ever left the U.S. at all. As a result, Haiti continues to struggle with over 100,000 internally displaced people living in dilapidated refugee camps. The story of Haiti is just the tip of the iceberg as most countries facing natural disasters or wars that desperately need aid end up in that same situation. Cases like these make one wonder where aid funds go to. Naturally, one might think that the poorest countries in the world are supposed to be the top recipients of foreign aid but that's not the case. The UK for example has as top aid recipients Pakistan, Syria, Ethiopia, Nigeria, and Afghanistan, all of which are not amongst the poorest nations on earth but because of their market size or geopolitical importance, they get most of British aid. When former British Prime Minister, Theresa May visited Africa, she made it clear that the UK aid budget was meant to promote British trade and political interest, a statement that contradicted the very definition of aid. The US also distributes its aid by targeting countries with substantial market size, rich mineral resources, or because of their strategic position. In 2011, a company in charge of printing Super Bowl t-shirts for the NFL had 100,000 unsold t-shirts by the end of the tournament. Each t-shirt cost $20 so to minimize losses by benefiting from tax cuts, this US company donated its unsold t-shirts to a Christian charity called World Vision. World Vision then proceeded to distribute these unwanted t-shirts to Zambia, Armenia, and Nicaragua. 100,000 unwanted American t-shirts was certainly not an urgent need for Zambians but they got them anyways to save an American company from losing millions of dollars. World Vision went further to use this questionable aid as publicity by headlining its block with the phrase, 100,000 reasons to love the Super Bowl. This gesture was a clear example of how aid has been used as a medium to sell unwanted merchandise. A recent study showed that one-fifth of the aid promised never leaves donor countries for the people it's meant for. It either remains in the banks of the donor countries or is given to their local NGOs. In 2011 for example, developed countries raised $100 billion in funds as foreign aid to be given to the developing world but out of this, $22 billion was never transferred. That same year, Italy raised $2 billion but only $300 million left Italy. Even the little fraction that finds its way to the receiving country passes through several agencies and NGOs with each agency taking a cut to finance its operations and pay its exorbitant salaries. In 2012, an investigation revealed that the British Government Agency for Foreign Aid had spent €20 million Euros on five-star hotels and €400,000 on furniture for their new office in India while millions around the world were in desperate need of help. Most times, aid given as a financial grant is often tied to companies within the donor countries from whom the recipient must buy goods, hence creating a market and jobs for the donor. When the aid is given in the form of a loan, not only does it cripple the economy of the recipient through debt accumulation but it's also tied to banks within the donor country who then decide how the money should be spent, thus furthering their economic interest. Even when the aid is given in the form of technical equipment, it's likely to end up in the hands of corrupt leaders who get irrational with their distribution. In 2014, UNICEF decided to help the nation of Zambia revive its educational sector by offering 78 motorbikes to Zambia's Ministry of Education to improve monitoring of educational facilities in rural areas. But questions started arising if the bikes were used for the exact purpose or were offered to friends and families of ministers for their personal use. 
We are not saying that foreign aid isn't a good thing but donating countries shouldn't use aid as a business model for their economic interest by taking advantage of the needy. Thanks for watching and please share to raise awareness. Hey! If you love this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe as a way of supporting us.